So the impetus for the Seattle flu study was to develop a system to understand how flu would enter and spread within a city. Traditionally, we rely on the hospital to give us answers for when f the flu season starts. And often that the people who go to the hospital are people who are elderly, who are very young, and they're not often the first people who get sick. So we think that the people who actually get sick first and probably spread it within the community are not in the hospital. And if we did community-wide surveillance, we might be able to understand how flu enters the city and spreads before it hits the hospital system. So I think one of the key benefits is to be able to prepare for the flu season. When flu season starts, it often overwhelms the hospital infrastructure and often overwhelms pediatricians' offices. Everybody shows up at the same time. You suddenly need to have a lot of doses of antivirals ready to give. And this would provide a system where we would know early. We would give you about two to three weeks um, notice ahead of time that something was happening in order to pre prepare for it. So the Seattle flu study was designed to really understand how flu entered and spread in, the, in any metropolitan area. And the goal was, was that this would be able to be extrapolated to any city around the world for flu surveillance. Um, I think what it requires is strong partnerships in the community. We worked very closely with groups including the airport and workplaces and child care centers and homeless shelters in Seattle and we implemented community surveillance systems at all of these sites and I think that requires a lot of communication and education and a lot of time spent answering questions of the community to make sure that what we're doing is appropriate and acceptable to those out there who are actually going to be seeing the first cases of flu.